What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Thanks for stopping by. So today we have an exercise tutorial, the back extension. So this is going to be one of the best exercises for the hamstring, for the glutes, for the lower back, and it is a surefire way to blow up your deadlift. Now, for those of you new to the channel, when I do an exercise tutorial, I don't just talk about how to do an exercise. I think that's sort of pointless. You can find that almost anywhere online. I talk about why you should be doing them. I'm talking about the muscles that are going to be worked, some variations that can be more appropriate for you, how to program it in your training, the sets, the reps, the advantages, the disadvantages, and keep in mind that these are all real sets. So the effort is real, it's not fake, the weights aren't fake. If the technique differs slightly from rep to rep, that is because it is a real set with real effort and real weights. Now, the variation that I prefer is where the bar is on the back of the neck. This provides a lot more range of motion, but you do have to power clean it up there or take it out of a rack or something like that. So it is a little bit less convenient, but the range of motion absolutely makes up for it. So what you do is you get into the machine. Do it. Do it. You set up and then you have to brace. So take a deep breath of air in. I'll do a full video on bracing, but make sure you are braced before every rep. So you go down, don't just slam out of the bottom position. You want to control the negative and focus on the glutes at the top. So don't just arch back with your lower back. You want to focus on squeezing your glutes at the top and pushing your hips into the pad. This is going to be crucial. If anyone hurts their lower back when they're doing this movement, I can guarantee you it's because they were arching back and not focused on the right areas. When you're fatigued, it's easy to try to use too much lower back, but you really do want to focus on the glutes. So at the top of the range of motion, right there, fight the urge to arch back and really be squeezing the glutes and pushing the hips into the pad. You also might want to weigh down the machine. Uh, I put a dumbbell on the back just because I'm using fairly heavy weight, about 40 kilos, and so the machine could tip over if there's no counterweight. So once you get up to pretty heavy weight, be safe, put a plate or a dumbbell on the back of the machine. You can also use just body weight. In fact, I would say for most beginners, body weight is gonna be sufficient. You can put your hands across your chest or sort of hang them down at your sides. You can also put them in the prisoner position. This is called the prisoner position for obvious reasons, and this actually makes the exercise a little bit more difficult. The weight is the same, but because it's farther out in front of you, away from the hips, the fulcrum is longer and it's more challenging. You can also put them out in front, get a little bit of rotator cuff work as well. You can also pick up a dumbbell and do it that way. Load it with one dumbbell, two dumbbells, kettlebells, that's fine. This allows you to use your lats to keep it closer, making it a little bit easier. Uh, this is called a rubish style of a back extension. I do think it's good. I do think it has value, but the range of motion is going to be significantly shorter because the bar or the dumbbell hits the floor and you can't get that full stretch on the hamstrings. Still, it's an excellent variation and I think it's very good. You should try both. This one is gonna be a little bit more weight, probably twice as much weight actually, but I prefer the bar on the back version because of the range of motion and it just feels a little bit better and it requires me to brace the core more as well. When you're starting off this movement, go very light. You might wanna use less than the bar, uh, maybe use one of those like 10 kilo bars or something like that just to get used to the movement and see if it's right for you. And don't be a hero. This is not an exercise to max out on. I would say at least six reps is going to be a good minimum. So I've maxed out before. I'll be perfectly honest, but it's not really smart. I've used, I think, 70 kilos for a one rep max on this movement. And at that point, you're not really getting that much out of it and the risk starts to go up. So I would say six reps, eight reps, 10 reps is a good range. Sometimes I'll go up to 15 or even 20, but six to 10 is gonna be my bread and butter. If it was up to me, I would actually not call this a back extension because while the spinal erectors are working, most of the range of motion should come from the hips. So it's more of a glute and hamstring exercise. My hamstrings are brutally sore today, so it's definitely probably more hamstring than glutes, but it's gonna work the entire posterior chain. 
in terms of how to program it, I would put it on a lower body day, obviously, if you're doing an upper lower split, legs, if you're doing push pull legs, uh, I would put it after your squats or deadlifts. If you put it beforehand, it's going to be overly fatiguing, and this is more of an accessory movement, so put it near the end of the workout. It's also a great way to decompress the spine. In the bottom position, the sacrum and the lower back tends to open up, which is fantastic for recovery, and I feel way better when I do this movement. So definitely include it in your training. So now we're going to talk about a few mistakes that I commonly see. The first one is going to be putting the pad too low. So if you do it this way, you're probably going to get knee issues, so don't do that. It's also going to be very awkward to get any kind of range of motion. Not worth doing. Putting the pad too high, on the other hand, means that you can't get hip extension because you aren't actually hinging at the hips, you're hinging on the lower back. Now, this isn't a bad spinal erector movement, but I would say for most people, you want to be working the hips, the spinal erectors, and the hamstrings all together. So don't do that. Another one is going to be if you are arching back. So if you are arching back, if you are really trying to squeeze the lower back at the top, don't do that. That's a surefire way to get hurt. Again, the hardest part of the range of motion is at the top for most people. And so a lot of people will try to cheat by arching back excessively or by trying to fling their arms back or their body back and really just focus on the glutes. You want to have the glutes contracting and the hamstrings and the glutes together doing most of the work. A good way to practice this is just bang out sets of 40 or 50 reps. So just with your body weight, focus on squeezing the hips into the pad. This is great if you have tight hip flexors and can really make a big difference. All right, that's all for this video. Make sure to leave any comments or suggestions for videos in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.